Okay, okay. Go! You hand me my screen box. Now go freak. Brown record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Michael Pomorski, 24106. Okay, Miss Rose Nagel, why do you have your phone out? Oh, Is it no show the court officer because I want to make sure it's off, completely off. Yes. And so um Miss Rose Nagel is present, who's the names. Uh, victim in this matter, and today is the date scheduled for sentencing on your client's charge of domestic violence. And um, I just received this morning a statement from Mr. Komorski that has been placed in the file. That's correct. We've gone over that. I've also had an opportunity to speak to him regarding the contents of the precepts report. Uh, your Honor, one thing that's glaringly Evident is that the equities in this situation, whereby my client will abide by all this court, this court has to say and all the court's orders. But it entirely seems equitable that he's been ordered to have no contact with the alleged victim who still remains in my client's home. My client's paying all the bills, he's paying the rent. He has no idea what condition his home is in. It's been brought to his attention that now the locks are even changed. So he couldn't even go there if he wanted to. So uh, the alleged victim is exercising authority over that establishment that I don't think, uh, it, well, let's just say it borders on being illegal. But I advise my client that he should consult a, a property lawyer or a landlord tenant lawyer or something of that effect. He said he's. He's tried to have her serve, and that no process server will attempt service. Is that correct, sir? Yes. What does that mean? No process server will attempt. Please. I have called your several process servers to try to have her serve a thirty-day notice. They all asked me. First question they asked me: Does she work? I said no. They said we won't take the job. She won't answer the door. Several in a row told me the same thing. Okay, uh, Ms. Rosenagel, please step forward. So, ma'am, if you could please state and spell your first and last names for the record. Danny Rosenado, A-N-N-I-E. You are a uh, named victim in this matter, and so you have an opportunity to address the court. So what would you like the court to know? That he's hit me and took some money from me. He has come to the house when I wasn't there. Took a lot of things, destroyed stuff. Uh, he was oh. supposed to come there with the cops. He did do that twice. And we had no problems with him doing that. He's never attempted to serve me. He sublet, sublet, subleased the place to me. And hold on, what do you mean? He subleased the place to you. What does that mean? Meaning that I could live there. And, and he was going to live somewhere else? Yes. When when was that? Before we were right before this all happened, because I gave him the money. What money did you give him? To pay for the sublease for six months. How much did you give him? Six thousand three hundred dollars. And how did you give it to him? Cash. And are you working? No, I'm on uh disability. I have seizures. So I get to, I'm on disability but because my husband passed away so they can meet widow's disability. So they give me his social security instead of mine. And you have $6,300 cash? Yes. And what date did you give um, Mr. Pomorski the cash? I did my aunt was with me, but it was three days prior to him assaulting me. Your Honor, excuse me for interrupting the court. Has the victim been placed under oath? No, I don't typically place victims under oath when they're, when they're addressing the court. Well, I think um, these are issues that my client denies, Your Honor. Counsel, counsel I, 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 I understand that. I, I understand that. When did you relocate into the apartment? Derek, can, can you stand over that way, please? Just like in, over there. Um, 
Between Mr. Serrano and Ms. Rosa, yeah. please. When did you move in there, ma'am? When did I move in there? Um, two months prior to the incident. Two months? Yes. So you moved in there in November? Yes. How long have you known Mr. Komorski? From November. So you met him in November and you moved in when? Uh, shortly about this. You moved in before Christmas? Yes. Okay. And so, how did you meet Mr. Morsky? Uh, we met on uh, the date map off of um, Facebook. Okay. And we tried to date, but it, it didn't work out, but you still moved in? Well, we, yeah, we were more friends. Not as living together like that. So you met on a dating app. You moved in with him. Correct. Because the two of you were dating. Right. And then after you moved in, then you weren't dating anymore? Well, we dated for a little bit, and then it just didn't work because he started doing, he was doing meth, and I don't like that. He brought meth into the house. And he smokes a lot of weed, and I don't mind somebody doing weed, smoking weed, but just to do math, no. So why don't you just move out? That's his apartment. I didn't have anywhere else to go because I get old. I was, he said he was the sub least the thing place to me. So I did. Yeah, I gave him all my money. When did you give him the $6,300? Right before all this happened. January 28th? Yes. And when did you stop dating? Shortly after we moved in. Okay. Because it, 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 we, were, we weren't compatible. We were more like friends. He was too... It, it just didn't work. We were more better at being friends. Okay, and so you're saying that he was doing meth and a lot of pot, and so that's why it wasn't working out. So that was in December. Yes. Okay, and yet you still were living there for another six weeks or so. Correct. Instead of moving out. I lived in, I stayed in the bedroom, and he stayed out in the living room. I really, it doesn't matter where you were staying. You're saying that you lived there. You didn't like that he used meth and pot. And so that's why you weren't dating anymore. I asked why you didn't move out. And you said you couldn't because you didn't have any money. You'd given him all of your money. Right. But that's not accurate, Anne. You didn't give him your money, the money that you say, until January 28th. Right. So there are six weeks that you were still living there and that you could have relocated. You know, before I given him my money is after he get, just started doing math and everything in front of me. Yeah, listen, listen, please stop. Please stop. You just said that you weren't dating anymore because of the meth and the pot that Mr. Pomorski was using, and that you haven't been you weren't dating since December. Okay, so that timeline. Is six weeks before you gave him the money to sublease the apartment. So that's not jiving. That's not all adding up. That's not your place. That's not your place. But uh, he subled it to me and I gave him the money. I had nowhere else to go. I couldn't find nowhere else to go. So where was he going? I got him given up. So here's the person that had an apartment. You just met the person. This person is going to sublease the apartment and move out to some other place. Yeah, there was a lot of people that were doing that online that I had seen, but he said he would do it and he had somewhere else to go. It was closer to work. I didn't know. None of that even makes sense. Man. I have no idea. Okay, so um, Mr. Pomorski, did you receive $6,300 cash from the Not defendant? Not at all, Your Honor. Did you receive any cash from the defendant? Not at all, Your Honor. Okay. So, ma'am, I'm going to say this. Mr. Komorski is going to be permitted to move back into his own home. If you have a problem with um, 
Mr. Remorse will be receiving monies from you, and you weren't able to stay in the apartment, then that, that, that's another matter. That's a different action. But this court's not going to prevent Mr. Remorse from going back to the home. So you're going to have to move wherever you have to move. Uh, well, I, I can't just do it overnight. You know, I don't have no family. I don't have nobody. And I haven't been able to get my stuff out of the thing because he's had the keys to the store. He's had the keys to the mail. Everything. Okay. Have you um, changed the locks on the apartment? Yes, because he kept coming in there when he wasn't supposed to, when I told him not to. Ma'am? And he was just... What day... What day did Mr. Komorski go to the apartment when he, without an officer? A lot of the times that he came over there. He well, I, need, I need dates, ma'am. If I'm going to have bond violations, I need dates. He came over there, I have to get my book, February, it's in February. Okay, where's your book? It's out in the truck because I didn't want to bring my purse in to get all the, the stuff that they goes through. Even the neighbor said, even the maintenance man said, because he's the one that helped change the law. Okay, but you said that he came twice with officers. But he came, no, I'm sorry, he came once with officers. And that was when he got um, out of jail. Okay, and then, so ma'am, how, how were you able to change the locks on the property if you're not a main tenant, the maintenance man helped me because he kept coming in there and still taking stuff and destroying everything that was in there. So the apartment and allowed you to change the locks and you're not a main tenant? The maintenance man helped me because he seen on him coming over there when I, we weren't there and no cops were there. So it was like he was destroying, taking stuff how, and man, how destroying did, my stuff. How did it come to be that the locks were changed? Did you did you file did you file a work order with the management company? No. Well, how did would the maintenance person have known that the lot seemed to be changed if you didn't file a request with a right. work order? I had he had told me about him coming in there, let me know because people knew that he wasn't supposed to be there without the police. Okay. Have you been getting the mail, ma'am? No. Not one, one ounce of mail that I've gotten. You don't have any sort of medical spending cards or anything else of Mr. Pomorski's? No. And so are Mr. Pomorski's personal items still in the apartment? Yes. Okay, please have a seat right here, ma'am. Mr. Pomorski, I'm going to have you move to the podium, please. Your statement is that um, your medical spending card has had several ch purchases charged on it. How do you have that information? Because I have an app on my phone and I got the notifications and I get emails to my work email saying that there was spending on my house savings account. That card was left in my apartment in a closed envelope addressed to me. That card, when I was not allowed at the apartment, was activated and spending put on that card. Okay. Ms. Rowan all has was you the only one. Do you have that on you have that on your phone? Does it show when that card was activated on your phone? I don't know if it says when it's activated, it says when all the charges were, and they were all in starting March 6th, when I wasn't allowed to the apartment. Okay. Does it tell you what the purchases were? Um, kind of. I okay, can get my your phone? phone. Your Honor, while well, well, we got a break here, there are so many in, inconsistent statements that the lead victim has made. Obviously, she's saying other people knew that my client wasn't allowed there. She's never once said that, yeah, he came over and I was there and I didn't let him in. I didn't hear that. Okay. So everything else would be either here or there, something she can't substantiate. All right. Is that the app? If you give you that to me, uh, once you have the app open. It's opening now. Can you describe the types of charges? Sir? They were not large charges. Um, some of them were like debit purchases. It doesn't state what it was purchased. And some of them were charges to an Apple account, which I don't have. And I understand Ms. Rowanall has an Apple iPhone, so I'm assuming she has. Do you have an iPhone or an Android, sir? I have an Android. I have an Android. Well, here on my Wi-Fi, it states you have an iPhone. Hold on, let me... Direct. Hold on, hold on. Let me, I can't hit it addressing her. Please. I'm sorry. sorry. 
Um, okay, now let me see your phone, please, for a moment. Okay. Let me see your phone, please, ma'am. I'm going to turn it on if you don't have a problem with that, just no, so I can see something here. Uh, yeah. Well, just so you know, this says Samsung Galaxy powered by Android. So this is not an iPhone. I'm going to step off. We're going to go off target for a quick moment. <clears throat> All right. And so we're back on the record as a matter of Mr. Gomorski. And so, um, Ms. Rosango, can you please come back to the, um, to the podium, please? Okay. So you're asking for restitution, is that correct? No. 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 I thought you were asking you wanted the money back that you had given to. Well, I was hoping to be able to stay there, but obviously not. But I would like some time to where I can be able to find the place. And I would like to wear the have the restraining order against him. Well, a restraining order against him because I'm very fearful of him. So you're fearful of him, ma'am, but you haven't moved. That's what I'm trying to right now. It's very hard to when you're on a very limited monthly income and everybody wants first class and security. And I've been trying and it's hard. I understand I'm trying to do to all the housing things, but they've got waiting list, I've been going and filling out all those applications and doing everything. It's not like I'm not trying. And, you know, I've been filling out applications after applications. I can't get the mail. I have to go and pay the extra money to get a, a post office box, which that's expensive just for six months, was $90. And I haven't even got my mail, which for I, I'm not Verizon, but my insurance company from when I had my November 30th, I was involved in a, a road rage that turned into a stabbing and I got stabbed and the girl rear-ended rear me and they kept sending me checks which came to the address which he gets the mail, I can't. So now I have to wait for them to stop payment on everything and wait for new ones and all kind of stuff. So here's the thing. All right. Okay, ma'am, I'm going to have you have a seat. All right. And so, Mr. Pomorski, or I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Serrano, um, anything else on behalf of your client? Your Honor, just I think the court can see the, the equities. Uh, my client is willing to do what he has to to complete this court's requirements and will abide by all the court's orders. But he just tells me that. He's on his own scouting around. She's done this before to other people. She's got a lengthy criminal history. Uh, Your Honor, I don't think her word's good. And my client's here to substantiate it. We hope the court would uh, adopt the recommendations, give my client a chance to clear this off his record after the period of time. Well, Kassel, I don't know what Ms. Rosano criminal history is. Is that in or not? Um, at the end of the day, your client allowed this individual to move in with them. So I cannot, um, at this point, order her to move out of the home because that's not before the court. There's another avenue that you'll have to take, sir, um, which sounds as though you started going down that avenue and I'm not sure why process servers won't, won't serve. I have no idea. Um, as far as your health savings account, sir, I don't know what that is. You'll have to look at that. And if you have to file a police report, you file a police report. I, I don't know. Um, but you allowed somebody that you didn't even know to move in with you. And here is where you're at now. So um, the court is going to state after hearing from Ms. Pomor Mr. Pomorski, Ms. Rosenagel, um, counsel, that there is reasonable grounds to park on sale 769.5. You are not eligible for an early discharge. We will take this matter under 769.4a. And the court's going to order the following. You're not to violate any criminal law of any of government. You're not to leave the state without the consent of the court. You are to report truthfully to your probation officer as the officer probation officer may require. 
in person, writing, or virtually. You have notified your probation officer immediately if any change in address or employment status. You're not using any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed to be subjected to random testing. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is so the court can monitor your progress in maintaining the outcome of sobriety. The court's going to order 12 week domestic violence counseling. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is so that you can increase your responsibility for your own actions, educate you as to how to change your behavior and manage potentially abusive situations. You're not to possess or purchase any firearms or weapons. The rehabilitative goal for that condition is to assure victim community safety. Do you have any of those, sir? Do you have any weapons or firearms? Oh, no. You're not to have any contact with Ms. Rose Novel. That's phone contact, text message, email, social media, third party, anything of the like. With the exception of third party contact regarding her relocation. Well, you just said that she had to leave the apartment and I got to go back. I'm not preventing you from going back, but you're not allowed to have any contact with her. So how are you going to go back if she's still living there? Well, it's an inconsistent order, Your Honor. No, it's not, counsel. It's not. Here's what I'm ordering. I'm not ordering that he can't go back to the property, right? That's his property per the lease. Right. So I'm not saying he cannot go back to the property anymore, but if she's there and he can't have contact with her, how is he supposed to go back to the property? What I'm preventing is that if I put that order in there, then your client's going to have to file a motion to amend the probation terms once she moves out so he can go back to the property. Does the court believe that she gave him $6,300, Your Honor, to sublease it when... Counsel, uh, that is not before the court. The court's not ordering any restitution. She's indicated she's not requesting restitution. So that issue is not before the court. Well, but what I'm saying is this. I'm not preventing your client from having access to his apartment or going to his apartment, right? He can come and go and get things as he needs, but the locks are changed, Your Honor. That's another issue that is not before the court. That, it's not before the court right now. There's not there's not been a matter regarding that, okay, before the court. So if your client is going to the property, he cannot have contact with her. So what I'm saying is this: there's no contact with Ms. Rose Nagel, with the exception of third-party contact, so that you can have communication regarding her relocation. Okay. I'm not preventing your client from going to the property. So he needs to figure it out for himself. Your Honor, this is one of the biggest con games I've ever heard in a court of law. This this lady uh, has from nothing. this court. No, I'm just saying at any at any time, Your Honor, my client cannot access his property. He can go there and sit in front of the house, I guess. He can't go inside because she's there. He can't go inside because the locks are changed. I understand the court has no jurisdiction over that aspect of landlord tenant, but I never heard. Well, I do if there's an action before the court, but oh, there yeah, isn't. I understand, but not here today. But you know, having been an apartment manager in the past, there's nowhere that says you can just sublease your apartment to anybody you want without the apartment complex approval. So, so counsel, when your client has to pursue. Whatever he pursues. What I can't do, right? Ms. Rose Nagel's name is a victim in this matter. Your client entered a plea in this matter. So I cannot treat the victim as a defendant or a suspect or anything of that nature without having anything before it. I can't treat them. I mean, I've had matters where I've had defendants as victims and victims as defendants on cases involving each other simultaneously. That is not the case here. That's not the case here. You're saying it's a con game? I don't know. I don't have any of that information before me. All I know is that Mr. Pomorski moved this person in after meeting her online very quickly. And do I think that all of her story makes sense? No, I do not. But the fact that somebody, a maintenance person, apparently changed the locks without having a work order done through the apartment complex, I, I don't know how that happens either. Your Honor, that did not happen. I went to, I was told by law enforcement that I could go to my apartment's office and to my mailbox. And when I asked the maintenance, being the leasee of the apartment, to go check the apartment to see if she was still there, 
They said the locks were changed and they couldn't get in. And the leasing officer informed me that that was a violation of my lease because due, given that you have to supply them, you have to either have them change the lock or supply them with a key. Okay, I am very well aware of that. So then what you sell in this court is not accurate. And then you need, sir, I cannot tell you what you have to do. I cannot tell you what you have to do. You have an attorney. He can tell you which avenues you need to pursue. I cannot tell you that. Clearly, there were some not great choices that have now resulted in some longer lasting effects. Yeah, I just thought I heard you say that I was going to be able to return to my apartment and she had to leave. I heard the same thing, Your Honor. I heard you say that. What I said was, you have permission to go back to the property. And what I said to her was, she should be moving out. She's not a leasee, right? However, she's claiming she gave you money for a sublease. So she doesn't appear to be moving without court action. I don't have authority to tell her right now she has to move. I said she needs to move from the apartment, right? As a statement, you, you, because as a statement, because it is because you're the lessee, right? And I don't have any documentation that would suggest that she is subleasing the apartment. Therefore, because I don't have that documentation, I'm allowing you to go back to the apartment, but you can't have contact with her. So you have to figure out how that's going to be effectuated. Rather, um, I, you just stated that I could return to the apartment and that she had to move. You did state that. Sir, I'm telling her she has to move. I can't, I'm not telling her she has to move tomorrow or in 10 days. I don't have authority to tell her that at this point. I don't have an action in front of me regarding that. Now, perhaps common sense would say that she should be moving on her own without court action, but I can't tell her to move right now. I don't have that action in front of me. When I made that comment, it was so that she was aware that she doesn't seem to have any, from my perspective, at this point, without having any documentation, she doesn't appear to have um, a sublease, a valid sublease, right? Which is why I've given you permission. I'm not preventing you from going back to the apartment. But what I don't have is authority to order her out of the house within 10 days because that action is not before this court. So that, that's where we stand, sir. I'm not, I'm not preventing you from returning the property, but you also can't have a contact with her. So I'm not telling you how to effectuate that, how not to effectuate that, or otherwise. That's something that you have to figure out. My client tells me it's a $250 bond. Here. The and the restitution is $0 at this point. All right, anything else? I'll take it for a moment. Sir, I understand your predicament. I cannot solve all your problems today. I, I can't. I can't do it. I don't have the jurisdiction for what the limited purpose is in front of me to solve your problems. The court's going to order a three hundred dollars fine, one hundred dollars screening assessment fee, six hundred dollars supervision oversight fee. That's fifty dollars a month times twelve months. Two hundred dollars for cost of prosecution, crime victim assessment fee of seventy five dollars, justice system assessment fee of fifty dollars. And you've been deemed to not to not be indigent. And so the court's going to order $250 for attorney fees, total $1,575. And um, you do have you did post a bond a $2,500 10 percent bond. So there's a $225 bond balance. Do you have any other money to pay today? You want a monthly payment, sir? Or you um, to I have more? money to pay today, but I won't be able to pay it off. How much can you pay today? I pay like 700 today. Okay, so seven hundred or nine hundred twenty-five dollars will be applied when we apply the two hundred twenty-five dollar bond balance. I understand that. You posted a bond, sir, yes. and so your bond balance is two hundred twenty-five dollars. When you add in the seven hundred dollars that you're paying, that's a total of nine hundred twenty-five dollars we're applying to your balance. Oh. Okay. okay. Leaves a balance of six hundred and fifty dollars. How much can you pay per month, and what date of the month works best for that payment? Um. I don't know, fifteen dollars a month. Can you begin that April fifteenth, sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And sir, if you were to test today, what's in your system? Marijuana. Do you have a prescription for marijuana? I'm sorry. I have a car. 
Okay, please remove your hands from your pockets. And oh, um, how long have you had your card, sir? Uh, a week, a few days. It was legal before. I didn't see a reason. I use it in the evening for my pain. To get to my pain, unless we sleep. He got it in response to the court's position of his marijuana use, Your Honor. Uh, but he's the court's position is is that if there's not a valid prescription, he can't use it. Well, that doesn't mean run right out and grab a prescription. Is it from your treating physician? It's from, from your treating from, physician. It's from the physician I'm being treated for for this. Yeah. For what? It's not my primary care physician. No. Okay. You're but treating. I do have a letter. Oh, I'm sorry. You're a treating physician for what? You said for this. What is this? I have. I was in an injury uh, accident ten years ago where I was T-boned. It left the left side of me pretty crushed. My left leg is. 90% titanium with severe sciatic nerve okay, damage. So you have an orthopedics doctor that you spoke that you've been treating with. Right. Okay, so the orthopedic doctor is the one that prescribed the medication for marijuana. Yeah, it's not it wasn't my primary, right? Okay, so is it the orthopedic doctor? And I have a letter on the way. You're avoiding my question, I'm sir. Sorry. Which tells me that I think you went right to a clinic. The clinic went ahead, gave you a letter. Is that how that happened? Oh, I didn't go right to a clinic. No, okay. So who, what's the name I of the doctor? I made an appointment with a doctor. A, a doctor. Your, your orthopedic doctor? No, he's not my specific Okay, orthopedic. the doctor you made an appointment with that you got the prescription from. How often have you met with that doctor before you got your prescription? It was the second time. The second time? Yeah. When was the first time you met with them? A couple of days before. Okay, that is my point, sir. If you have a medical necessity for marijuana, right, just as though if you would for insulin, cholesterol, blood pressure, any of that, you're meeting with the doctor, you're treating with the doctor. So if you need medic marijuana for medical purposes, then you need something from your treating physician, whatever physician that may be that treats any of your ailments, sir. Doesn't necessarily be your primary care, any physician that treats your ailments. That is where that has to come from. Since you didn't have your card prior to having this court matter, you don't just get to run out and grab it. And because you have it, that gives you that gives you the permission to do that. That isn't how that works. Since you didn't have a valid prescription before your case, then you need to submit that to the court and request permission to use now based upon your prescription. But this court's also very keenly aware that there are individuals that run out, chat with this, a doctor to just get a prescription, and that's it. There's no oversight. You need it for medical purposes. Medical oversight is what's needed. Just as though any other medication, right? This is a medication. Right. So that's where that's where we are. I saw a doctor about this and in treating me for this amongst my age and arthritic pain and everything else. That's what the doctor prescribed. Okay, so when's your next appointment with this doctor? Next time I make one. How often do you need to see this doctor? Well, at least once a month. You know, we're for my progress. Okay, good. So just get something regarding what you, what your next appointments are, how often he's seen you, and then you I the court will review that as to whether or not that um will be approved. Whatever it is that you currently have, send it into probation. Do you have it with you? Uh I I it's on in the mail. I have the so how do you know I you have, have the email contact? verification? That is stated to be in replacement of the card until it arrives. Okay. And I also have a letter from the doctor stating why I need the medication. Okay. All right. Please go over to probation. I'll be with you shortly. Ma'am, I think that you've heard everything that seems to be coming down the pipe for you, right? It appears as though uh, Mr. Pomorski is going to be filing an action. So you may want to start getting your ducks in a row before that action is filed. All right, thank you for coming in today, ma'am, and addressing the court for the Victims' Rights Act. And uh, Mr. Pomorski, please have a seat over on probation. All right, we are on the record in the matter of the City of Wine Network's Robert Rollis, 24245. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm my client. All right, and Mr. Rollis, your name, please. Robert Rollis. All right, and counsel, ask to the arraignment. Wait for more reading, my client stands mute. Well, we call a reading entry plea of not guilty for purpose of the arraignment, and we will schedule this matter 
for pre-trial on March 20th and adds to bond. Your Honor, my client's 36 years old. He has no pending cases. He's not on probation or parole. I know that he does have a criminal history, but I know that he's had nothing since 2018. He's gainfully employed at landscaping. He lives in South Haiti. He currently lives with his parents, but he also takes care of his two children, ages two and three. He's in a steady relationship with the mother of those children, and he's going to be planning on moving to Trenton to uh, have a family dwelling. Judge, uh, in this circumstance, I'd be respectfully requesting consideration for a personal bond. I don't believe he has any reason to have contact with the witness. He was very sincere and try doing our interview. We'd ask for any leniency this court to consider. Thank you, Judge. All right. Sir, are you back to work yet? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of snow this year, but uh, if we have snow, I'll be working right now. Um, the early, early, early April, we'll be back to work. So how are you supporting yourself and your children um, right now? Well, I know it's no yesterday. Um, just odd end jobs with me and my father do. Hold on. Hold on. You were talking about the dusting that we had? I said, no, I said odd end jobs that me and my father do. Oh, I thought you said there was snow yesterday. No, right. That's what I heard. Do the phone call that there was there's was snow yesterday. That's that's all I heard. All right. Well, it appears as though, sir, you have a prior um, matter that you failed to appear for in Detroit. Um, years back, um, I I had a two hundred dollar bond. I posted a bond years back. Um, I don't know why that's still there. Um, me and my my father have yeah, the same sir, name. Sir, if you post the bond, you still need to go back to court. Yeah, two hundred dollars I paid. Okay, but you, that, that's just so that you're guaranteeing that you're going back to court. You didn't go back to court. That's why that's still there, sir. And that's not your first time that you've had a, uh, a court matter, correct? So you're familiar with how that works, right? I am. Yes, ma'am, I am. I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am, I am. And your prior assaults of con uh, convictions as well, and you have failed to appear in court before. Ma'am, may I stay you're currently something? Currently on court. Oh, yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Ma'am, um, I haven't been in trouble in six to seven years. Um, I'm not running from nothing. Um, I've I've completely changed my life totally around from drugs to my a little bit of alcohol at this point. Um, um fortunately I have uh, this uh history with these wine dot security guards at the hospital and uh when I was talking to them they threw me in the ground and I was Yelling at him, spit came out of my mouth, and it it, it hit one of them. And he said, sir, "Oh, you know, well, you just sir, 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 sir. I don't uh, want to hear anything about the facts of the case. Okay, that's something that you're going to handle the pretrial. I, so, I tell me know. about your manhunt at Lincoln Park. There's a warrant requested for a felony dangerous drugs from October. Oh no, no. I I, uh, I really don't want to." Said it out loud, but I, 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 uh, they, they wanted, I helped them with something, and that's that's it. Okay, so yeah, I helped them with something, and they got rid of that. Well, I don't know that it's, it doesn't show dismissed on here, sir. So I don't know what's going on. So here's what the court's going to do. The court's going to based upon the criminal history of the defendant, the fact that there is a pending warrant for his failure to appear, the assault of, um nature of the crime and the defendant's history of assaultive type matters. The court wants to ensure the safety of the public and that the defendant will return to court. The court's going to order a $5,000, 10% bond with the following bond conditions. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. You're not to have any, uh, any contact with the complaining witness in this matter. And, sir, you're also not to return to Henry Ford Wyandotte Hospital. If you have a medical emergency, you need to have them direct you to another, locate another hospital. That's my bond right now, isn't it? What's that? Isn't that, isn't that my bond right now, $500? $5,000, 10%. And these other bond conditions is what I'm also ordering, sir. Are you paying attention to the bond conditions? I am, but yes, I am. You also have to possess or have access to any firearms and or any weapons. All right. Anything else? No, you yes. All right. You'll have a copy of those bond conditions. And there's a notice of prosecuting officials that we have completed as well. 
And we'll see you on the 20th. Thank you. Matter of City of Wanda Dockers, Tabitha Four. 23W92759. Good afternoon. And I do apologize, ma'am, for your wait today. Um, all right. So a couple things. Number one, um, you are here today because you received a citation for uh, mandatory school attendance and education neglect regarding your child, correct? Yes. All right, that's your son, Carson, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, you had not chosen to speak to the prosecuting attorney in this matter, correct? Yes. And the prosecuting attorney is recommending to dismiss this matter. Correct. Okay, well, I have a few questions before I go ahead and stop that. That's fine. So, it's my understanding is, uh, let me see, is Mr. Barnes here? Yes, I am. Okay, when you have you step up, please. All right, and Mr. Barnes, if you can state and spell your personal last names again for the record, please. Michael Barnes, M I C H A E L B A R N E S. Okay, and so Mr. Barnes was present on the March 6th date, um, and ma'am, you were not present. You indicated that. Um, Somebody was sick. I don't remember if it was Carson, Carson or somebody else. Carson was sick, yes. I have his um, attendance right here, and I have it medically excused for that day. Okay. Well, all right, I'll take a look at that, please, because what I'm showing here as to what you brought out, you brought to the prosecuting attorney's office is not anything from last week. What? I gave him that paper. I showed him my paper hold on, right there. Hold on, just one moment. I thought that the last one I saw... Was well, December 1st of 2023. I'm sorry, December 1st. Okay. I just picked that. I show I show September 14th of 2023 at the urgent care. I show October 18th at the urgent care of 2023. November 3rd of 2023 at the urgent care. December 1st of 2023 at the urgent care. Those are the only ones that I have here. So that's what, five? And there were shows that there were 15 absences that were unexcused. There, he was sick for more than just one day at a time for each of those. Okay, but there isn't anything that says the length of time that he would be excused from something. On the urgent care papers? Correct. It should be. I don't know why there's not. And why? Did, did, does, isn't there a pediatrician? Huh? I couldn't hear you. Don't you have a pediatrician for your yeah, son? Yeah, Dr. Morris. Yeah. Morris okay. Sorry. So why don't you go to the doc to doctor the pediatrician instead of the urgent care? I the urgent care is right down the street from me, and I don't vaccinate my children, so I don't really go to the pediatrician office. Yeah, I I don't vaccinate my children. Oh, okay. Then, well, that's your choice. Then. Okay. But I'm not so questioning that urgent care for their. I, you have a pediatrician. Why aren't you taking your ch your child to the pediatrician <clears throat> for those issues? Because it appears as though he gets sick every month, and so perhaps there may be something that um, that the doctor would be able to notice in a pattern or something instead of multiple different doctors. Um, I actually have the school. Um, here, connect on my thing, and all of the kids in this class are always sick. It's not just my child. I, you know, I, I didn't say it was just your child. I'm suggesting that perhaps you should. Okay, um, I'll start taking him to the pediatrician. Yeah. So that you have some continuity of care, and if there's a pediatrician, right? Because you're, there's, there's a lot more unexcused absences than medically excused absences. And the citation shows it was for 15 absences, and I have doctor's notes for, here for five. Right, but he was sick for more than one day at a time for each of those urgent care visits. Does W mean a scheduled half day? I'm not, it says on the bottom what the letters stand for. Right, it says SRSD half day. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? I'm not sure. I, it, it's not it. I don't know what SRS whatever that is, stands for. Okay, and so how is Carson doing in school? He's going every single day. And um, was there a point where he had to repeat the kid? He had to repeat kindergarten. Yeah, I actually requested for him to repeat kindergarten. 
And why was that? Because of his absences. I had just had my newborn daughter. He was no help at all. And I... You mean Mr. Barnes? Yeah. Okay. I'm a single mother. He does not help me. I have no financial help from him. I have no child care help from him. Nothing whatsoever. Okay. So that's my son. It's actually started. He's not... I don't think he's picked, he's picked him up maybe twice. Dropped him off maybe three times. Um, we've had these kids together. The responsibility should fall on him as well. Um, not just me. But he's here today. So and so is there a uh parenting time order? Yeah, but he doesn't get the kids for his parenting time at all because he told me he doesn't want to money for a couple actually a year ago. Okay. So Mr. Barnes, you're here today and you were here last week. Do you exercise your parenting time on a regular basis? Uh, she is not allowed. No, 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 no. It's yes or no. Do you no. exercise your parenting time on a regular basis? No, no. Why not? Uh, because I have not been allowed to per her demands. Uh, anytime I make a request to see my children or anything like that, she claims that I'm harassing her, uh, did not contact her. Um, I've made several filings and uh, several court dates that we went, we went to court four times now for her, um, not following the court order that's been established. Uh, there's been times where I've had to wait six months to get into a court date uh, just for them to reward me, uh, make up parenting time. Okay, just one moment. Anybody have a copy of your parenting time agreement? Or your I, uh, I, have, I have my phone. Ma'am, um, I have allowed him to come into my own home to spend time with his children. And he has took it upon himself to record in my house, which there's... No need for that. If you're here to visit with your children, you're here to visit with your children, not record what's happening in your home. Well, I would agree. So why would you have to have parenting time at the home and not at his house? Um, the first time I gave him on overnight with my daughter, I picked him. I picked my daughter up from the yak arena where my son plays hockey. He was feeding my daughter a spoiled milk bottle. So I'm sorry, that's neglect to me. Well, yeah, quite frankly, <laughs> not something right. a child it is a right. right. Oh, I know. So, so, that, so, so hold on. He does. So, you're, you're on one hand, you're saying that he's not exercising his parenting time. But on the other hand, you're wanting to tell him how, how and where to have his parenting time. He's untrustworthy, and we're we're going to court. He's untrustworthy. Yeah, that that's a front of the court matter. So you're correct. So he's untrustworthy <clears throat> in this set because he gave your daughter a spoiled milk bottle? Yeah, left her in a soiled diaper. He does not. My son actually told me that my daughter was crying in the car. Michael got mad and blared the music so he didn't have to deal with it. Okay. My, I, Michael has been at my house. I told Carson I was running to Circle K. He said, can I go with you? I said, sure, of course. He said, no, actually, I'm going to stay and make sure Daddy takes care of Naya right. My son should not have to overlook his father. Well, no, but he also should know what right and wrong parenting is. I mean, six years old. I, how, 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 would, how would a six year old know what's right or wrong for parenting? He's yelling when he's yelling at my daughter that's crying and then turning the music up to avoid taking care of her while Were she's you there crying. during that? Were you there during that? No, but my son. Okay, so you're listening, you're hearing what a six year old's perspective is. I'm not saying it didn't happen. Right. Right. This but you're hearing a six year old a six year old perspective. It is it is a front of the court matter. But there's also an order that is in effect as far as parenting time and where the location of parenting time is. So you're saying that it's the responsibility should fall on both of you. The parenting time should be in accordance with the parenting time order until it's changed by a court order. So the parenting time should be what the parenting time order says. That is what the court order says for the circuit court, correct? Yes. Okay. And so Mr. Barnes uh, apparently is um, checking to make sure that uh, Carson is at school on a regular basis. And which, Mr. Barnes, you need to be careful that you're not bordering on some criminal behavior with how zealous you're being in check. Please don't interrupt me. Please don't interrupt me. With how zealous you're being in making sure Carson's at school or not. There is nothing wrong with going on the parent portal and checking to see if he is at school or not at school. You do not need to park outside of her home to watch somebody take the child to school. 
Am I clear on that? May I speak? Yes. Uh, the court officer actually called me and instructed me that what I was doing uh, for the school, just called me before I walked in. He instructed me that what I was doing was okay and that he reviewed camera footage. Um, and uh, there was actually a time yesterday where she cussed out his teacher for having the phone. I never hold on, hold on, hold on. What I'm saying, sir, is I'm not saying whether it's, it's okay or not okay. I'm no. saying you have to be careful so that your behavior is not bordering I know, but on criminal behavior. The allegation is that I'm outside of her house and I'm at school. I'm not outside, I'm not at her house at So that's where the misconstruity is coming in here. Either way, um, there is no need, there is no need to drive from Van Buren Township, which I think is where you live, right? Yeah. There's no need to drive in to watch if your child's going to school when you can simply go on the parent portal to check to see if he's there or not. We'll see that the issue is the, the main reasoning behind this also is to verify that my child is okay. I can't see him. She won't give me it on my court order time. So this is the only way that I can effectively see my child at all right now. I can't FaceTime him. She won't let me call him. She won't let me contact him whatsoever. Yes, I have. I have okay, stop. There is a court order. There's a court order in effect by the Third Circuit Court that must be followed unless there's some other order that has then been entered after that. And for me right now, with the front of the court, to terminate this. Okay, but there's not an order that says his rights are terminated. Okay. There's not an order of, of, of any attempt. Right, that's other than a parenting time order. So the two of you, at one point, there was trustworthiness between the two of you that you had children together. So he was trying to have a child with me three weeks ago. So the fact that he's doing this is just he tried to have a child with you three weeks ago with the yes. I have to pick my son up at three o'clock. Okay. And so what do you mean he tried to have a child with you three weeks so ago? So if I'm such a bad mother and I neglect my children, why why is he continuing to try to have kids with me? That was a conversation? Is that what that was? That was a statement. Okay, and so what was the statement that he made? Um, he, the last time I took my son to school, he yelled from the school door to me, that's still mine, I love you. Like, I'm not dealing with that. Was your child next to you or no? Um, for one of them, yes. Okay, and so how do you know he was talking to you and not the child? When I'm walking away without my child, and it's blowing me your mind still. Okay. Let me say this. There is a court order in place. There is a court order in place that spells out the parenting time between the two of you. You're clearly angry with Mr. Barnes. Rightfully, wrongfully, I don't know. You're clearly angry with Mr. Barnes. But the court order is the order. So, other absent another court or another order going into effect replacing that, the order needs to be followed. The order needs to be followed because that, otherwise there's other there's other issues that could arise from that. The court's going to adopt the recommendation at this point. I'm going to dismiss this. If if you're here again for the same matter, man, it will not be dismissed. There will not be a dismissal. Um, more than likely. Okay, so I do not have to return to court? Not this one, but third circuit court, you probably have to. Oh, in front of the court or wherever it is yeah. you guys have your hearing out. Okay. I'm sorry? Am I okay to go? Yes. Have a good day. Kidding me. Oh my god. You have got to be kidding me. What? What is going on today? This is this is a joke. This is a joke. The day is absolutely We need an interpreter. I need an interpreter when I cannot express myself sometimes. Oh my god. So put that cigarette out. I don't give a crap that you are outside of your this. What is wrong with everybody today? You know what, Miss Reed? We're going to start bringing people in first. He's going to learn how to act in a courtroom. <laughs> Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Ma'am? Ma'am? Can you hear it? No, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I have no, no fear. Man.
Trust me, I'm gonna be right.